So if we wanted to have a formal definition, so as a formal definition for what a finite state automaton looks like, this is just all of the pieces that we saw. So we have a finite set of states that we call Q. We have some sort of transition function that takes as input a pair of a state and a character from the alphabet and produces some state as output. So the domain of this transition function is Q cross sigma, so that is the states cross the alphabet, and then the output is a state. So in this case, there are a finite number of states, this being a finite state automaton, there are a finite number of states. Our alphabet, we said, is also always going to be finite. So this transition function that we called delta, that is a finite function, which means we could implement it how, if we really wanted to. We could uh, hypothetically create a NAND circuit to do this. So if you really, really wanted to actually implement this in some hardware, then you could represent the transition function as a NAND circuit of some kind. We identify one of the states as being the initial state, and then some other subset of states, however many we want, as the final states. And then these five things together, what are my states, what's my alphabet, what's my transition function, what's the initial state, what are the final states, those five things together define the implementation of that automaton. This rule that we describe here for an execution, there's kind of this for loop where the number of iterations that for loop is going to go is however many bits were given as, as the input, or however many characters were given as the input. So this just says for each character you're going to do this thing. So it's going to do more things if you give it more characters. There's no upper bound on the number of steps this could take. So the more characters you give it, the more steps this is going to take, which is what's allowing it to do infinite functions, which circuits could not do. Other questions? Yes. So basically his question was, what sorts of things can this compute? To, to just put this in, in really broad terms. The fundamental challenge of a finite state automaton is this finite state thing. Since you're only allowed to use uh, what state you're in and what character you're looking at to determine what state to go into next, if there was some other piece of information you wanted to keep around that you didn't in advance pick as one of your states, then this isn't going to help you with that. Yeah. We can't have an infinite string of characters, but there's no limit to how many characters the input string could have. There's no bounds to the length of the string. All the strings that we're ever going to compute are going to be finite, but for these infinite functions, there's no limit to how long the strings could be, which says the domain is infinite, which is why we call that an infinite function. Not because the inputs themselves are infinite, but because the number of options is infinite. So this is basically some pseudocode for the execution, where we have some sort of variable we could think of as being our current state that's initially the start state. And then for each bit or each character in the input, we're going to update the state to be the result of the transition function applied to that state and the next character in the string. And then the value we return is basically whether or not the state we were in was one of the final states that we had. This is how our execution model looks.